Greetings. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, brought to you by Heart and Soul Broadcasting Services. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today I'm in conversation with Caroline Jacquet, the Project Manager at BioInnovation Zimbabwe. If you enjoy this conversation, remember to subscribe, to like, and to share. Let's get down to some work. Caroline Jacquet, welcome to In Conversation with Trevor. Thank you for having me. So we're going to be talking seeds. We're going to be talking traditional foods today. Um, talk to me about bioinnovation Zimbabwe. When did you set it up and what does this organization do? All right. So bioinnovation Zimbabwe was um, founded, started in 2011. Um, and our thrust really is um, to um, commercialize um, indigenous uh, plants. Um, the, and and it, it has very many, th there are very many reasons why, why you know, we're looking at that. Number one, it's because um, in very many places in Zimbabwe, as you know, um, it's hard to, to grow things. Um, but there's always, you know, so many amazing um, stuff that is found in the forests, in the wild. Um, but these things don't necessarily or very often have markets um, are also not very much researched. Um, farmers, local people um, are deeply familiar with those species, uh, have a lot of use for them, you know, traditional uses for them. But none of that is being much recognized. So we wanted to change that um, by um, offering markets for these for these um, species but also by um, helping farmers to sort of like um, fuse and and incorporate these these plant um, products in in their diets as well to diversify diets as well um, we we also obviously want to offer Zimbabwean customers and and people outside Zimbabwe you know, high quality traditional uh, products from Zimbabwe. Um, and all of that, of course, with the ultimate sort of aim um, that it will help conserve the natural resources as well. Um, because, I mean, as you know, you know, the forests in Zimbabwe are rapidly um, disappearing. Um, and But we believe that if we can give a, a commercial and economic and financial value to, you know, the trees and the plants, mm. that um, communities will, will, will protect them. Mm. Um, well, why particularly Zimbabwe for you? <laughs> okay, um, well, I sort of like accidentally um, got into, I, I, I started, um, you know, after my studies um, uh, in Belgium, I, um, I started with the World Agroforestry uh, Center um, with their headquarters in Nairobi, um, Kenya. And um, they had a regional office, um, you know, for Southern Africa with the office being in Zimbabwe. And that's how I ended up in Zimbabwe um, and obviously was covering a lot of countries in, in the region at the time, but really fell in love with Zimbabwe. And mm. then um, when after a couple of years, they asked me to move back to the headquarters, I said, you know what? No, thanks. I'm staying here. I'll, f well, I'll what, find something to do here. What did you fall in love with? What did you fall in <laughs> love with? What struck you about this country? I think... Um, the incredible uh, sort of kindness and um, how how talented Zimbabweans are. Um, I think that's what what really re what I really really enjoyed um, enjoyed working um, with Zimbabweans. I, like I said, I worked in the region, so I had a bit of experience with with other nationalities as well. Just just really enjoyed working with Zimbabweans. Um, mm. And then obviously also by then had become a bit familiar with the the sort of like plants here as well um, and, and thought there's just more more to be done here. Let me just remain here for a bit. Interesting. And 15 years later, there still you here. Are. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, what are these indigenous uh, plants that we're talking about? Can we, can we just sure, sure, sure. drill down into so the, that? The very first one we looked at was a, a very iconic plant, monster tree, actually, the baobab. Mm. Yeah. 
Um, so because uh, you may not know it, but baobab trees are found in very many uh, African countries. But Zimbabwe is the African country with the most baobab trees. So um, it's a tree that is found in the low felt, you know, the dry areas where often people don't have very many ways of making an income. There is this amazing fruit and other things that can be, you know, consumed uh, on the tree. Um, well, what 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 else can be consumed from the tree? So the fruit, what do you do with the fruit? Shall so we start the, there? Okay, sure. So mm -hmm. the, the fruit, I, I don't know if people, if everyone knows the baobab fruit, but it looks a bit like a coconut, yeah, a hairy coconut. And when you open it up, it's got powder in there. Um, the powder is considered a superfood. Hmm. Yeah, just like you know your blueberries and yeah, other sort of yeah. like more famous superfoods. Yeah. Um, very high in vitamin C, um, very, you know, rich in calcium, magnesium, um, really a good sort of like supplementary powder to add to your, I, I prefer doing it in the morning. Um, it has a very tangy taste, mm. you know, like lemon mm. yeah, almost. Yeah. Um, so I like to sort of like add it to my yogurt, which is already a bit sort of like sour anyway. So, um, and get my sort of like boost in the morning. But inside the fruit is also seed. The seed can be made into an oil, a cosmetic oil, um, you know, and the, the oil can be added to lotions and things like that. Um, has got, you know, a, a, a good promising sort of like starting market uh, overseas. Um, there's also fibers, little red fibers. Um, they are added um, as an ingredient in, in, in tea. You know, when when you when when you open up a, a little sachet yeah. of tea, there's often lots of different things that have been blended in there. So it's one of the ingredients in tea blends. The reason that um, tea manufacturers prefer to use the you know the fiber rather than the powder is that the powder sort of clouds everything, um, while the fibers have got the same properties as the powder but don't cloud mm. things. Um, the 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 pot itself. Um, can be made into briquettes, you know, charcoal. Yeah. Um, but the pot itself, because it's quite a nice sort of like shape as well, I've seen it made into like lampshades as well. Um, so it's it's got multiple uses as well. The leaves, the leaves can be consumed as a vegetable. Wow. Yeah. Um, you probably also know that the bark can be made into rugs. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot wow. of different uses to, to wow. the barbed tree. But so... Even though we knew that, local communities knew that, the rest of the world didn't necessarily know about that. And that's that's um, what we wanted to change. So there's a law um, that you can't just export um, foreign foods into um, you know, Europe and, and the States. Um, it needs to go through a sort of like novel food approval. Um, so we did that for the baobab powder so that we were now, we are now able, and that's not just us, but anyone, uh, you know, dealing in baobab powder anywhere in the world is now able to export baobab powder into, into Europe, thanks to the work that we did, wow. um, getting it approved as a, as a, as a, as a safe food. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So started from there and then, you know, built from there, then we looked at, uh, and we still do, uh, we look at Marula. Um, which a lot of people know because of the Amarula drink yes, from South Africa. Yes. <laughs> um, we looked at, you know, things like um, uh, resurrection bush, Mufandi Chimuka. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Which, you know, which is a fascinating plant, the way it just dries like, up dies, and yeah, you and put it in water. water. And it resurrects and goes green. Uh, even, I mean, we've... You can snip it, you know, and keep it somewhere for years. What properties does it have? Yeah, obviously, it's got some properties that obviously are now also being... I mean, it, the, the resurrection bush itself is... Um, uh, the, the, the properties are very similar to rooibos. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and um, so that's how, that's how we also introduced it onto the Zimbabwean market by blending it with rooibos. Zimbabweans are not very big herbal tea drinkers. Mm. Um, and so the only herbal tea actually everyone knows is rooibos. So we thought the gentle way to introduce it um, would be to blend it with rooibos. So the first resurrection tea that was on the market was a blend between rooibos and resurrection. Mm. And then when once people start knowing it, you know, you can then start being a bit more creative. Adventure, and, and, adventurous and exactly, with it, exactly. yeah. But so yeah, it's, it's got antioxidants. It's got it's got all these things that rooibos also has. And it but, grows widely. 
exactly. all over the place. Yeah. Uh, mountains. Yeah. Um, exactly, exactly. Very hard to domesticate, you know, to cultivate. Yeah. We've not managed so far to sort of take it down from, from the, the rock, mountains, from uh, the rocks. Put yes. it in a, like yeah. a, a pot or a field, um, which makes which means that we also need to be very very careful. Are, are about we exporting how we, any of that stuff? We do. What are you? You're so exporting the the tea, the, the blending yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah, or even sometimes the, tw the because, because what we were saying just now that when you put the twigs into water, they go green again. Yeah, it has actually ornamental mm. ornamental uses as well. Mm. So we've been exporting it as far as um, Switzerland, wow. where people. People just, you know, people have, having that have flower shops, you know, they, they would add it to like a bouquet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah. so you've brought us some some yeah. stuff here. And yeah. I know that you are <clears throat> big on uh, uh, millet, rapoko, munga, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to get into that, but we're going to take a break right okay. now. So at home, please don't go away. Uh, join us on the other side when we get into the qualities uh, that lie in some of our uh, indigenous uh, traditional foods such as millet and so forth. So see you on the other side. That there are no ready markets for, for small grain. Greetings. I am an African. I invite you to join the In Conversation with Trevor Almenai at a gala dinner to celebrate Africa Day. This is a gathering of business leaders, community leaders, civil society to celebrate Africa Day. We're going to engage in thought-provoking conversations, share insights about Zimbabwe and Africa's place in the world. How do we relate with nations like China, India, as equal partners? We look forward to seeing you on the 23rd of May at Cresta Lodge. Our keynote speaker is going to be Shingai Mutaza, celebrated entrepreneur, and our Master of Ceremonies is going to be Ruveneko Paranyatwa. See you at the Cresta Lodge, 23rd of May in Harare. Welcome back to our conversation with Caroline Joquet, the Project Manager at Bio Innovation Zimbabwe. So you are big on millet. Um, can, can, we, can we just drill down into what is what, what's what's the spread of millet? I know there's monga, there's mm -hmm. sogum. Just break mm -hmm. it down for us so that we we understand what it is that we're talking about. All right. So yeah, we're big on small grains because this sort of millet and yeah. and sorghum, yeah. um, which are part of the millet family, uh, are sort of called small grains. Some people don't like the term small because they say it's because the grain is small, small. it we don't mean that it's small in the terms that it's less important but uh uh yeah so we we work a lot with with uh, small grains uh you know indigenous legumes as well um like like nemo bambara nut um all the sort of crops that are more climate adapted um especially with you know the droughts that we've experienced again this year I think people start realizing that we need to move away from mm. maize and soy, uh, you know, the, the sort of crops that really require a lot of water. Um, Which are foreign crops. Foreign crops Introduced as well. um, by 1900, yeah, 1910, of, thereabouts? A couple of generations ago. Um, because prior to that, we survived on yeah. Upogo, Inyauti, Amabele, Munga, Rukweze, Mapfunde. But there's a stigma yeah. associated with these yeah. traditional foods, yeah. where some people have a sense that it's food for poor people. And yet, this is what we survived on before the white pe white men came into this Correct. country. Correct. Talk to me about that. And not only survived, but thrived. Thrived. Yeah, because, yeah. because these... Uh, these crops are actually much more nutritious and much more healthy. Much more resilient, and resilient to our tough climate. Resilient to your tough climate as well. Correct. I, I, I think the, the problem often is the way we introduce those um, small grains and other traditional crops to farmers, uh, you know, by, by telling them, because we know the maize will fail because of your conditions and what, what, what. Why don't you also grow some <coughs> small grains so that you know when or if your maize fails, you still have mm. the small grains. Mm. It's not a nice way to introduce a, a crop. It sort of like makes you feel like, oh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm a failure. Mm. I'm, I'm a failure, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm, let me grow some small grains. But also, I, I think the the issue with small grains also, but it's changing and it's changing rapidly, um, is um, that there are no ready markets 
for, for small grains mm. until very, very recently. If you grow maize and you have a surplus, they, you will never, ever struggle you to know, find off, a offloading it. If it's not local with your neighbors, uh, you can always end up at GMB or whatever. There's always a market for maize. If you have a surplus of sorghum or you know uh, pearl millet or finger millet, it's not always so. Easy what are to you find. doing to create to to create that market? So so we do multiple things to create that market. Um, we um, we talk to we we work hand in hand with private sector in Zimbabwe. Mm. Uh, on the one side, and then we also do a lot of consumer sort of awareness. Um, so private sector, um, uh, there it's 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 a matter of um, giving them, uh, sort of opening up their minds that the products that they already have, that they could they could add to their range. Um, say for example, mm. national foods, mm. they have porridge. Mm. You could easily make a porridge that uh, instead of maize incorporates sorghum or finger millet mm. um, so it's it's often just about sort of like telling them and and just just as you're doing that these millets are rich yeah um, in a lot of things Correct. so they're rich in protein mm -hmm. they're rich in fiber mm -hmm. minerals like uh, iron potassium phosphorus they are antioxidants mm -hmm. they're rich in vitamin B they're also gluten-free. Correct. So we should be eating this. Yep. So I'll, I'll share something with you. I, I'm, I suffer from food allergies. Okay. And so I can't eat maize meal uh -huh. uh, because I'm allergic to that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I'm now back to eating millet and I'm thoroughly enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm finding quite a lot of people are doing that yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, then the benefits of uh, consuming uh, millet are also uh, good digestive uh, uh, health, it lowers cholesterol levels, uh, weight management, mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. You brought us some some here. What did you What did you bring us that we can look into? So, so that was part of our sort of strategy of uh, introducing, you know, these <coughs> these traditional foods yeah. to consumers. Um, people sort of like generally are lazy. Yeah. They, uh, and with lazy, I don't mean, uh, but, but they, they like convenience uh, and they, uh, you know, people don't have much time. And you know that a lot of these traditional foods take a lot take of time, time to cook. Yeah. So that's why we've looked at um, producing some ready-made uh, healthy products, mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at uh, reducing the cooking time, for example, for small grains. Um, we canning, for example, also bambara nuts now so that they're ready to eat. Um, what is yeah. this made of? So what this, is this is amaranth. Have you heard of amaranth? No. Okay. Amaranth is moa or bonongwe. In, is is in this Zimbabwean? Yeah. yeah. Wow. You do know it's, it's, um, it's a wheat. Um, you at, during the rainy season, not so much this year because we didn't have any rain really, but you see it on the corner of almost even every street in Harare, a big sort of like reddish, purplish looking plant. People harvest the leaves as a vegetable mm -hmm. and it's got a sort of flower, a reddish sort of flower. Okay. In that flower, there's actually small, small grain. Um, which and is, you're producing, and this so, is what, duck, duck chocolate and which yeah, is gluten free. So we free. popped it. Exactly. We popped it and then we added peanut butter and dark chocolate and made it into a snack bar, really healthy snack bar. Fantastic. Yeah. And and this? This one, I'm sure you know, Zumbani. Dry. Oh, this is Zumbani. Yeah. Zumbani became very, very famous uh, even outside Zimbabwe during the COVID period. Um, Zumbani is traditionally drank as a tea um, to treat flu-like symptoms, mm -hmm. throat ache, runny noses. Mm -hmm. um, are you exporting any of this stuff? We are. Where are you exporting it to? So we are a lot of it is exported to South Africa. Okay. Yeah. Um, Zumbani, I think we may also be exporting it to the States mm -hmm. at the moment. Yep. Interesting. Yep. And these are nuts, eh? Yeah. Our hacha nuts. Yeah. Do you that's, know that's the... Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Muchakata tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So uh, quite a smelly sort of fruit. I mean, you could smell the. the you could, I, I can uh, because I'm now familiar. Can with I? It. Can I open this? Yeah, please mm -hmm. do. Okay. Um, you can smell the tree from a distance uh, when the fruits are in season. The yeah. Fruits have quite a strong smell. Inside the fruit, just like a plum, uh, there's a stone, and when you break open that stone, these are the kernels, edible kernels that are inside. Uh, traditionally, you know, Hertz boys, mm -hmm. they all know it. They say, oh, yeah, you know, we we, we chew on those things. Uh, we snack on those things while we watch the cattle um, grace. 
but you know we've now we've now just we've not done anything complicated we've just roasted them lightly salted them and put them in a pretty pretty packaging and all of a sudden it looks like something that could have been imported right and that's what people that's what i think we need to um, make people understand what what are the uh, they're not inferior those, uh, those what are uh, the food uh, uh, so it's a nut so yeah. just like um it's it's very comparable in nutritional sort of profile as as any of your other nuts um which means that also if you have a nut allergy so I won't you will touch also them. be I'm allergic stay away from yeah, this yeah. yeah but uh very high in vitamin e for example, which is good for your hair and your skin, mm -hmm. um, but also yeah, just just very very similar to to any other nut. So you know, if you're looking for a cheaper, you know, more affordable because this local grows nut, in the wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harvested from the wild. Can can we commercialize it? Oh yeah, grow it commercially. I guess so, but there's just so many trees that are found in the wild that I think we should start by protecting them. Um, and uh, protecting a tree yeah, is giving yeah. it some kind of value other than for its timber. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's what we're trying to do here. And so now these nuts are, you know, made into nut butters, the way you can also make a peanut butter. Mm. Um, they are added to mueslis and other breakfast cereals. The yeah, the, the the sky is the limit once you once you sort once of you like, get yeah, into it. Yeah, yeah. You you've you've um, gone into. Um, um the good f food festival yep. and the good seed festival mm -hmm. talk to me about the thinking behind that all right so uh, like like what we were saying is we're dealing with traditional foods even though people are familiar with them they're maybe also not so familiar with them um so uh, we we realized that a lot of sort of uh, consumer awareness raising was required um, or consumer education was required um, and so um, we do a lot of audio and video and uh, we produce small booklets as well but yeah our big sort of annual event is the good seed and food festival mm -hmm. um, we like to say that it's the good seed and food festival because without seed no food so everything starts with good, good seed yeah good seed um, and so it's a two-day event that we organize in Harare in September every year. Um, first day is the seat swap. So we have farmers come from all over Zimbabwe. They bring seat um, from whatever crops that they grow. They may also bring seat from, you know, wild vegetables and things like that. And the, they spend the day swapping. So Chimani Mani is swapping with Binga. They're swapping with Mwenezi, the Chollocho. They, they all, they all there. Um, swapping seed. Um, I also get a lot of seed and then uh, I plant it at home and I get weird and wonderful things that I can't <laughs> always remember what it even is. Uh, but yeah, it's just super, super nice. And then the following day is when we really celebrate the food that comes, you know, out of the seed once you've grown and harvested it. Um, and so there's a lot of stalls selling fresh produce, value-added products. There is a, a kid zone, there's a youth zone um, where we do sort of like fun and educational things around agriculture, nutrition, climate change, but also traditional games mm. and, and toys and, and that sort of things, dance, mm. music. Um, there's live music, there's a food court, mm. there's, um, uh, there's cooking demonstrations. Um, so yeah, all, all to sort of like um, uh, celebrate basically Zimbabweans local foods. Um, and yeah, I mean, let's for example, the food court, um, the only the only thing that you need to respect is you that day you have to cook with Zimbabwe's traditional ingredients. So if you, uh, you know, throughout the year make pizzas, yeah. you're very welcome, but that day, your base will need to be made out of sorghum flour wow. or millet flour and not wheat flour. Mm -hmm. Your toppings, you know, it ha will have to be uh, kapenta and, you know, and uh, uh, moa leaves and, mm. you know, it, so are you seeing Are you be... seeing any significant change in yes, terms of are. what you're trying to achieve? Yeah, we do. Which is the multiplication and the availability yeah. of the seed yeah. to start off yeah. with. And then secondly, the market for these products. Yeah. Is that is yeah. that... Um, in the, discernible? Yeah, yeah, no. In the in the sort of like 10, almost 15 years we've been going, we can see a change where in, in the beginning we almost had to beg people 
to listen to us and to now people are genuinely interested it's really really interested we see the number of visitors increase um we we see returning visitors we see people sort of like throughout the year call us like you know like where can i buy these these things that i found at the festival mm. um yeah there's there's just there's a, a genuine interest and what is interesting also is is that people are both interested in in knowing how these things were prepared you know a while ago a long yeah. time ago you know the way grandmothers used to cook with these things they still want to know and i think it's important it's very important um but then they also want to obviously the kids are a bit sort of more modernized uh, and they they also they also want to like how can i fuse these things and make them more recognizable mm. to you know what what kids are familiar with so so all of that happens at the at the food festival we're going to take another festival. break uh, when we come back please don't go away i want us to go to the zimbabwe traditional and organic food forum okay. that we're involved in and also you are involved with hutano uh, foods Correct. i want us to drill down into what Utano Foods is doing. So at home, we see you on the other side of the break. More than ever, um, we are aware of the effects of, of climate change yeah. and the fact that these are the things that we really have to grow. Welcome back to our conversation with Caroline Jacquet, the project manager at Bio Innovation Zimbabwe. Um, Caroline, as we were taking a break and chatting with the team, you are white, you are Belgian, mm -hmm. you're telling us about, about our your own foods. food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This sounds awkward. Yeah, but I, I think it sometimes you know, needs um, a, a foreigner to to show you what wonderful things you have and, and for, for people to appreciate what they have. But I think what 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 my sort of like contribution also was is that in the beginning, um, you know, when we were looking at product development and recipes with with these with these foods, um, I came in completely sort of like unaware of how it's supposed to be consumed. Because very often when I was coming up with some, with an idea or you know, was, people were like, no, but that's not how we eat it. And I was like, says who? Says who? And, and so I, I think sometimes it, it, it just requires a little bit of like distancing and, and, and sort of like, you know what? This, this tastes a little bit like lemon. So anything that we put lemon in, let's replace the lemon with, with bulbap powder. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't work. But but it it doesn't you, the baba the baba powder. Mm, this you don't is, need this to, is baba powder yeah, that you brought me. Yeah, yeah. Mm. you don't need. There's there's not two ways to consume it, which is either you put it in water or in your tea, or you put it in milk and sort of let it ferment into almost like a yogurt uh, overnight. That's sort of the way my colleagues were consuming yeah. it. I was like, oh, okay. A bit, a bit now, don't you get pushback like the question I've just asked you now? Well, why should I listen to you as a white person talking about yeah, this? I'm, why I'm, you? I, no, luckily not. Um, but I think that's because I'm also very, very careful um, to always sort of like come in with mentioning that, you know, that these are your foods. But I just I have some ideas that mm. that could that could sort of like add value. Um, you've, but you've, I'm not. You're... I'm never trying to appropriate. Yeah. Um, uh, or pro uh, expropriate, appropriate our culture. Yeah. No. The, no. You've reminded me as I'm looking into this book of um, one of my favorite fruits, wild fruits, as I was growing up in the rural areas, and that is uh, it's called monkey orange, uh, mutamba. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, and you've also reminded us of uh, um, uh, what nee. is that? Do you know Ni? Nee? Yes. Yeah. And uh, what's the what's the other My one that I one, saw here? The masau. Masau. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, also tangy, tangy yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, you've started Utano Foods. Yeah. Talk to me about Utano Foods. So Utano Foods is a small food processing company that we started with uh, colleagues at Bio Innovation Zimbabwe. 
sort of at the beginning of our journey um, with Bio Innovation Zimbabwe, when we were discovering all these amazing ingredients, um, trying to find off takers for them, talking to domestic food and beverage companies, not finding a lot of enthusiasm uh, at that time and thinking, you know what, we're going to show them and everyone else that, you know, there's enormous potential in those ingredients. Let's just start our own little company, develop and produce our own small products. We very specifically focus on um, t t breakfast uh, products and then snack products mm -hmm. because we sort of felt that those are the two times when it's really important to remain healthy. Usually with lunch and dinner, you know, people stick to reasonably healthy. Mm. Um, but but it's breakfast, people don't have much time. Yeah. Um, and then lunch, I mean, then snacking. Ooh, the snacking in this place is uh, dangerous, dangerous. So we thought we need to... We need to offer people come with uh, healthy, healthy, healthy alternatives, snacks, yeah. healthy, you know, convenient, ready to eat alternatives. So where, where do we find Hutano Foods? So Hutano Foods, um, we are um, supplying um, a, a whole lot of small sort of like uh, more independent retail um, shops in Harare, but also in Bulawayo, in Mutari, um, in Vic Falls. So just about everywhere. We're not supplying any of the supermarkets. Um, I see. Why? Why but not? Th that's mostly to do with payments. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Conditions. Tell me, yeah. I, I'm having a problem right now with um, um, the, the, the 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 milli meal that I'm using. <laughs> what is it called? The the millet and yeah, stuff. Yeah. There's stones in yeah, there. Yeah. That's. Uh, but I find if I source it from Zimbabwe, they, they, there's a little. Yeah. Grain yeah. stuff yeah. in there, but if I get it from South Africa, it's nice and and smooth. Why why the difference? What's happening there? The only really difference is is that um, the f f farmers uh, don't don't pay a lot of attention when they process it, um, and uh, it's because they usually don't process it, you know, for the market. They just process it for, for themselves. themselves. Yeah. Um, but I mean, can we I, can I we improve that? Yeah, we can because I don't know if you look if you looked at this one, yeah. which is the you know the amaranth grain. It's the tiniest grain. It's like so small, much much even smaller yeah. than your pearl millet uh, and your finger millet. Um, you know your your uh, rapoko. Yeah, even smaller. But we have never found a stone in in this one because we've told farmers mm. that we want quality and that we will pay for quality, mm. and so they pay attention. Obviously, also in South Africa, you know your your um, uh, food manufacturers. Yeah. Uh, you know your your. It's 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 big. They will, they large will scale. have they will yeah. have clean machines to clean as well the grain um, before they then process mm. it into mm. porridge and flour and things like that. Um, Are you? Is there a time where I mean, funny that I'm asking a white uh, Belgian this question. <laughs> Is there a time that you think this stuff is going to be produced at scale that I'll be able to go in a supermarket yeah. and buy yeah. and buy the millet yeah. uh, um, food that I want to to to, to cook my salsa? I think we probably have just about reached that time. You think uh, so? Yeah. I mean, for I think for two reasons. I think more than ever um, we are aware of the effects of, of climate change. Yeah. And the fact that these are the things that we really have to grow um, in in Zimbabwe because because they they're more adapted to you know climate and also to condition farmers conditions who often don't have access to irrigation and things like that um but also consumers mm. are starting to demand these foods that's good yeah. you, we spoke before we went to the break about uh, the traditional organic food uh, forum how is that how is that going okay uh, well it's, so it's it's sort of a loose network of um organizations uh, and individuals in Zimbabwe um, that sort of all um, work around, you know, these more local foods, but also um, around very specific practices that we also feel need to be promoted, which we call agroecology. Um, um, Ivory. Agro, agroecology. Ah, sorry, agroecology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, in the past, it was also called permaculture. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So we feel it's not enough to grow the right foods, but you also need to grow them the right way. Yeah. So for us, no fertilizer, no chemicals, At no all. fertilizers. Uh, there's other ways to, to grow uh, things that are, you know, healthy for 
soils, the planet, mm -hmm. and also for ourselves, because in the end, we mm -hmm. are the ones who will be eating, you know, those chemicals. Um, mm -hmm. So I am. I don't know if you're aware of the story. I'm. I'm fascinated by um, the story of Mai Mukondo, who um, in Bikita, uh -huh. who has resuscitated oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. soboda. Yeah. Uh, farming, which is uh, a small grain, Correct. Um, which is very rare. Yeah. Uh, and she discovered the seeds stored somewhere in, uh, in her, her grandmother's, yeah, grandmother's country. Grandmother's country. Yeah. And the, 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 the fascinating things about the story is the danger of these seeds disappearing. disappearing. Yeah. But the beauty that she's found this, and this is now being grown widely yeah, yeah, in Bikita. Yeah, yeah. Are you aware of, of that story? Yeah, 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 because, I mean, it was our sort of like um, target crop at last year's festival. Um, and yeah, it's now gone out of Bikita because during the... That's beautiful. During the seed fair, obviously, farmers were swapping. And you can probably find it all corners in, in small sort of like volumes mm. in all corners of the country now. Mm. Yeah. So shall we just briefly before we we we, we end and go to, and go to books and talk talk about you? So you were born in Belgium. Correct. You studied. What did you study? Do you want to talk I, to us about that? I, I studied uh, also in Belgium. Um, yeah. I studied agricultural engineering, mm. um, specialized in forestry uh, and natural resources management. Um, then uh, did some more uh, anthropology studies as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's me basically. What, what excites you about what you're doing? Why do you do what you're doing? Okay, um, I think all the way from Belgium to. I, I think I mean, uh, up, up, Belgians are or um, they're gourmets. They love food, um, but not just any food. Mm. Good food. Mm. Um, we sort of like. The Labradors among the people, you know, the Labradors also, people always say Labradors are greedy, but it's not true. Labradors only eat like good things. They will leave, um, you know, they will leave what, what is not. Uh, but, but we just generally very passionate about food. In the morning, I'm already thinking about what I'm going to have for lunch and dinner. Um, you know, I like to, when I go back home, we discuss it in the morning. Yeah. Um, you know, what are we going to have for food? We, we, we really are very much busy with food. Um, but but also yeah I'm I'm just I'm just I worry about our planet as well and what mm. we do to our planet mm. um, climate change issues yeah yeah um, destruction of yeah. our natural environment and, and the way we're sort of leaving things behind for the next generations mm. um, so. the, what you're doing again is is this is heavy lifting stuff what for you uh, bio innovation in Zimbabwe what will success look like for you when will you say Gee, I've done it. What will that look like? I think when we've managed to sort of like um, create wealth in communities, um, really properly contributed to the national economy mm -hmm. with with these crops as well, um, and have got everyone in Zimbabwe eating healthy. Mm -hmm. that, then, what, what what if there's somebody out there who's watching you right now and say all these beautiful foods that she's talking about? Where can I get them in Zimbabwe? Where, 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 what what three places would you recommend? Uh, number one, definitely the Good Food and Seed Festival. Okay, um, that's, that's in September. September, yeah. it's a great place. Where to, does that take place? Botanical Harare okay. Botanical Gardens, mm -hmm. great place to stock up on things. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, then we also have uh, so the festival has a, a website as well uh, called Naturally Zimbabwean, mm -hmm. um, and there is a suppliers page on that. Oh, fantastic! So, um, when you're looking for your millets, your uh, local nuts, your local teas, just go on that page, suppliers, and it'll give you a list of um, places where you can where you can go and find these things. Caroline, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Love what you're doing. Love your passion. I can sense your passion. Do, do you read? Um, oh, yeah. Viewers love books yeah. on this show, okay, so right. yeah, yeah, um, we we'll turn, turn over to, uh, to 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 books and uh, uh, three books at least that you could recommend uh, yeah. to our viewers. I, I'm a very big reader, um, but uh, yeah, probably a book a week, like okay. literally. Um, but what book have you read that has made an impact that yeah. you want to recommend to our viewers? Three of those books. Okay, so I never read uh, in my spare time. 
um, uh, non-fiction. Okay. I always only read fiction. Fiction. So fiction. you wouldn't read uh, so King would, Leopold's uh, Ghost? I, 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 have, <laughs> I happen to have read that one. But yeah, um, but, yeah uh, fiction also because, yeah, it's to relax. Yeah. When I read, I just, I really you want, want to relax. relax. Okay. Um, so what do you read? So I read, my favorites are crime novels. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a big fan of um, all the Scandinavian authors. The, the, the Scandinavian authors, um, they sort of like known for their, um, it's a French term, but I think even the English use it, no, Nordic Noir. Mm -hmm. It's called Nordic because obviously uh, the Nordic countries. And Noir means um, dark. Okay. And the reason is that obviously in those places like Sweden and Norway and whatever, it's often quite dark. <laughs> yes. uh, half... what, what novels can you recommend to us but to so read? I, I, <clears throat> I think a lot of people will have probably heard of... Um, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Mm -hmm. um, it is just there's just an incredible, incredible sort of wealth of um, you know Swedish, Danish, Finnish um, authors uh, that that do that sort of like okay. crime thing. But obviously, I I also do read uh, you know a bit more serious books if you want. Like what? Um, Which one? My. Uh, I think one that I would love to recommend is uh, The Little Prince. Okay. Do you know The Little Prince? No, I don't. Okay. It's um it's it's a book by a French author. Um it was probably written maybe probably almost 100 What's years ago. What's the name of the French author? Um Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Ah, okay. Yeah. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. And so uh, obviously at um at Le Petit Prince mm -hmm. um, is is the original title but so The Little Prince uh, I think it's um, probably a book that has been translated into mm. hundreds of languages. It's mm -hmm. it's a child's book, but it's it's beautiful. And what what I like about the book is that you can just open it up any page. Oh, really? And just read. <laughs> okay. You know, you don't need to start <coughs> from the start and whatever. You, and Excuse I probably me. have read it. I don't know. Millions of times because um, the last book. What other book would you? The recommend? last book. Um, maybe the Alchemist. Ah, right. So you've read The Alchemist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because again, it's it's a sort of like it's a book that teaches you things. I mean, The Alchemist, it's really about finding yourself. Yeah, and also go go follow your dreams, yeah. isn't it? Follow your dreams, never give up. Never give up. Um I think that's the kind of thing. And also I think the the, the sort of story story behind The Alchemist is also is like often we think that the foreign, foreign will find will find the solutions to our problems, <laughs> which may be very true in this case. But no, it's it's also often we think that better things are elsewhere mm, rather um, than in us, and then we find out that they actually right here. Mm. Yeah. Wow! Right here, Carolyn. Thank you so much. Thank, you, <laughs> thank so you so much. We appreciate what you're doing. Uh, seriously, this is this is great work that thank you're you so doing. Much. Thank you. This so is much. you're starting something that has huge potential to to change uh, dietary um, yeah. um, uh, needs yeah. uh, for, for Zimbabwe, agriculture, you know, uh, growing um, the kind of uh, foods that are supported by our environment. So thank you so much for creating the time to come and join us. Thank, thank you, you so much for giving me, you know, uh, an, uh, an opportunity to talk about this. Fantastic. Remain seated there. Allow me to tend to our viewers uh, who are all over the world. So thank you so much for following us. Remember, we are out on YouTube at 7 a.m. Central African time every Monday. And to ensure that you don't miss out on any of these quality conversations, I invite you to subscribe, to like, and to share. We have gone a step further and created a website where all our content sits. We also have a, a podcast uh, for your listening pleasure there. Uh, we view your comments and we indeed, we like your suggestions as to who should uh, come onto the show. Keep them coming. Thank you for your support. Until next time. Cheers to you all.